All right, I'm going to make a quick video on this email. One of my students who is graduating pretty soon from dog training school, he is doing pretty well, good, good student, good trainer. He's looking for a job. You know, last, last few weeks of, of uh, school, that's what they start doing. They start looking for jobs. They start calling people, sending emails, preparing to start their business, you know, whatever the case may be. So he did that. He sent an email, and this is the reply he got back. You notice I blocked out the name uh, of the uh, the person, the business, just because you know at, at this point, at least I'm not into you know bashing too many people. I have bashed a couple of people by name, but you know it's Victoria Silwell. She's more of a celebrity than anything, but anyhow. Okay, so I work on my own. This is a reply the student got from this trainer. I work on my own with no employees, and I'm not set up for an internship. Sorry. Perfect. Hey, you could have left it right there. Yep. Now, here's the additional info. I will also mention that I practice science-based. There it is. Science-based, primarily positive reinforcement training, even for behavior modification. Okay, it is efficient and effective, and I'm not a proponent of e-collars or other pain slash force-based equipment or methods. I believe strongly that if you can train without using these, and good trainers can, it's not ethical to use them. And they can cause emotional fallout for many dogs down the line. You may want to look carefully at the websites of people you're writing to, to see what their philosophy and methods are. Not everyone will give you a friendly response. And I'm trying to think, is this supposed to be a friendly response? Because it didn't look very friendly. Let's read that again. Also mentioned that I practice science-based. Freaking everybody says that. You know what? If you are a balanced trainer and you actually know what you're doing, you are also a science-based trainer. The quadrants are science. If you're a purely positive trainer, that means you work with primarily two sides of that scientific quadrant. If you are a balanced trainer, you work with ideally, properly, all four sides of that scientific quadrant. It is so funny when people say that and it just kind of cracks me up. All right, so even for behavior modification, again, properly, uh, you know, properly uh, trained individuals know how to do that as well, even as a balanced trainer, guys, okay? Just because I'm a balanced trainer and I do behavior modification or I train dogs, it doesn't mean I slam dogs on the ground. I don't helicopter dogs. I don't kick dogs, okay? Now, there are assholes out there that do this, but this doesn't mean every person does that out there okay i'm not a proponent of e-collars or other you know force pain based equipment or methods pain right wow i believe strongly that if you can train without using these tools and good trainers can it's not ethical to use them ethical ethical i, I guarantee you that you do things in your life on a fairly consistent basis that involve some sort of choice or something that is in one way or another, whether it's to you or not, that is not ethical. All right, so yeah. Do you eat meat? Well, guess what? A lot of people can argue that it is not ethical to eat animals. Just to give you a little example, all right? I know I say, I've said this before, but come on, don't, don't be a, a jackass. Now, another thing here too, I am primarily, it says, I practice science-based, primarily positive reinforcement training. So primarily tells me uh, maybe you're not doing just purely positive. Last part cracks me up. It says, not everyone not everyone will give you a friendly response. And I'm thinking, is this supposed to be a friendly response? 
All right, so I'm going to take you to show my gallery a little bit. So I went to this person's website. Again, I'm not showing you the website, but I want to read about the trainer, right? So I'm looking at the trainer and uh, the trainer's website who wrote that email. And I'm going to read that. From my time with HSCC, I have a clear picture of the kinds of situations and behaviors that result in dogs ending abandoned or in shelters, most notably lack of uh, early socialization, so basic training. And let's see. So friendly dogs, basic manners, interesting, right? Okay, here, my philosophy. My philosophy of dog training is that our dogs are our partners and and companions, not our servants. I hate to break it to you, but no, they're not supposed to be like your part yeah, your your partners and your companions to you know to an extent. They're not to like you're not to humanize them, you're not to anthropomorphize animals. Right? But that doesn't mean they're your servants. Who says that? Animals have intrinsic worth not just in relation to humans respect and trust should flow in both directions i agree with that no nothing against that the methods i use are rooted in science there it is again science and based on cooperative not an adversive relationship with our dogs there is no dominating no leash jerking no alpha rolling good again if you're a balanced trainer, it doesn't mean you do those things. There are trainers who, who do that. There are trainers who do the jerking and the kicking and the alpha rolling. We talked about this before in a different video. All right, since we bring dogs into our foreign human world, it's not, a, it's not foreign. Okay, dogs into our foreign human world, they're domesticated animals. You're not, you're not out hunting for wild dogs and bringing them into your house. These dogs, dogs, have been domesticated. So you're not getting, you know, stray or uh, not even stray, but you're not getting feral dogs out from the wild and bringing them into your world. Uh, we need to teach them kindly to live successfully with it so we can all live happily together. This is training. I'm not going to shit on all of that. But, you know, there are some things on there that imply that if you don't do it her way, if you don't do it the purely positive way, that you're not kind, right? It says if you don't use science, you're not kind to your dogs. If you don't use science, you're not focusing on relationship. If you don't use science, you dominate. If you don't use science, you do leash jerking and alpha rolling. No, that's not how you paint other trainers that don't train like you. There are trainers like that, but again, that doesn't mean that all balanced trainers are like this. I can guarantee you the student, the trainer who sent you that email requesting if you were hiring, I know this guy, he does not alpha roll, you know, he doesn't kick dogs, he, he focuses on relationship. I know this trainer and I know he is a kind person. She's a kind dog trainer. Just because he doesn't train like you doesn't mean he's not. Okay, we can go so far beyond. It says right here, we can learn to uh, know our dogs as intelligent individuals, yes, and to have fun with them so that their lives and ours are mutually benefited and enriched. And in doing so, we become students as well as teachers. All right, anyways. I wanted to go back to, again, purely positive versus balance, right? That's going to be like the, the never-ending battle. And, and that's going to give me a lot of content. I can talk about this constantly. Another thing I talk about, too, is how a lot of balanced trainers are actually just BS. They're, they're assholes. They're not balanced. Another video for another time. But that's pretty much it. Um, to the students, keep up the good work, uh, and you're probably okay. It's probably a good thing that you know this person at least told you up front 
that this isn't gonna work out because I know trainers, I know students who have gotten a job or an apprenticeship on their purely positive trainers after being taught properly how to be a balanced trainer. And they and it's just it's to them, they've told me it's very hard to, you know, listen to these people talk.